Hello everybody, it's Ian the Cadet, welcome back to even more Ace Attorney, last episode, we started the next court day, we are against Von Karma, and he tried to make us lose in 3 minutes, he kinda had a seizure, then he said 15 minutes, until Larry Butts, of all people, jumped in and revealed the truth, but, we had to abruptly end last time because, well, uh, I realized that time was getting a little out of hand. Now, though, we are good. We can continue on. And I'm sorry if you guys didn't really like me just suddenly ending in the middle of Von Karma's talking. But it had to happen. I'm sorry. Anyways. That distance of the shooting was one meter. It couldn't have been suicide. Well? The guilty party has to be the other man on that boat. I admit it hard to imagine any other possibility. Yes. But this assumes that the victim was shot at 15 minutes after midnight. What do you mean by that, Mr. Wright? You have photographic evidence of the time of the shooting. The timestamp on the photo says 0:15. But Larry heard a gunshot 25 minutes before that. Robert Hamm was killed then, 25 minutes before the shot on the lake. That's the only way Edgeworth could be innocent. Mr. Wright, are you quite mad? Explain who the two men on the boat are. That be had, that had to be Edgeworth and the murderer. That's the only way that it makes sense. Of course, it was Edgeworth and the murderer. After the murderer killed Robert Hammond at 11.50, he assumed the guise of Mr. Hammond and went to meet Edgeworth. What? Are you serious? Yes, Edgeworth won't tell us why he went to the lake then. However, I have a hunch. That night, Robert Hammond called Edgeworth to the lake. Now, Edgeworth didn't know Robert Hammond's face that well. That's why he didn't suspect anything when the murderer took Robert Hammond's place. I'm not sure what to make of all this. Ludicrous! Mr. Wright, tell us the name of the murderer then. Murderer's name? Right, it's. Lot of Heart. I knew it. But it's I don't know. I don't know who the murderer's name. I suspect it's that shopkeeper! Bah, again, you waste my time. I don't know it because he never told us. The murderer is the caretaker of that boat shop, the old man. At 11.15, he was the one who killed Robert Hammond. The caretaker of the boat shop? Where did, where did he do this? There weren't any boats on the lake then. Or we'd have to go all the way out on the lake just to shoot someone. I suggest that the real scene of the crime was not on a boat. Well then, where did the murder take place? Happened right here, at a shack. Here, of course, the boat shop where he lives. There we can meet the victim without anyone seeing him. Do you have proof that the boat shop was the scene of the crime? Recall Larry's testimony, if you will. The night he was out on the lake in the boat searching for something. He finds it and returns to the boat. Then, just as he's starting to head home, he hears a gunshot. You're a gunshot, Your Honor, even though he was wearing headphones at the time. In other words, the gunshot was very, very close by. And where would that be if he had just returned a boat? The boat shop! <laughs> Mr. Wright, what happened that night on Gord Lake? Please tell the court from the beginning. Yes, Your Honor. Not really, but I think if I start at the very beginning and I take it slow, I might just be able to figure this out. That night, the caretaker of the boat shop called Robert Hammond to his shop. That was around 11.50. That was when the gunshot that Larry heard was fired. After that, the caretaker put on Robert Hammond's coat. He became Robert Hammond. Then he got into the boat with Edgeworth and went out to the middle of the lake. Then who fired the pistol in the boat, Mr. Wright? The boat shop, caretaker. Of course, it was the murderer who shot the pistol. He shot twice. Both missed Edgeworth on purpose. Wait a minute! Yes? I would issue twice if he didn't mean to hit anyone! Know this, Mr. Wright. The moment you run out of explanations, the moment you lose. Tell us why the murderer had fired twice. To create the witness. That makes the most sense. I believe that he was shot twice to create a witness, Your Honor. Create a witness? The murderer lifts his pistol and fires when shot. That ensures that anyone heard the shot look at the lake. Indeed. 
Miss Hart did exactly that after hearing the first gunshot. Next, the murderer waits a bit and he fires again. Then, the murderer jumps from the boat himself, leaving the pistol in the boat behind him. I see! There's someone looking from the edge of the lake. It would appear that one of the men on the boat had shot the other. The murderer didn't know about the automatic camera. That's why he shot twice to draw attention to the boat. Hmm. When she realized that everything else falls into place, the boat shop Tigger swam back to his shop. Then he put on Robert Hammond's wet coat back on the body and threw the body into the lake. This is what happened, Your Honor. These are the events that transpired that night on Gord Lake. Bailiff! Bring out the windows from before! The boat shop caretaker quickly! Very well. While we are waiting for the caretaker, I would like to ask the defendant, Miss uh, Miles Edgeworth, a few questions. Miss Edgeworth, please take the stand. Mr. Edgeworth, you heard what the defense has said. Yes. Well, why did you go to the lake that night? What Wright has said was mostly correct. Astonishing so, actually. Yes. Several days ago, I received a letter. The letter was signed Robert Hammond. He asked me to come to the boat shop at the lake on at midnight on Christmas Eve. He said he had something very important to discuss with me. Something important? I'm sorry, I can't say what it was. Your Honor, sir! Bailiff, you're conducting a trial here. I ask that you remain quiet. The witness has disappeared. He's not the boat shop either. What? What should I do? Find him quickly. We cannot allow him to get away. Mr. Von Kramer, your witness has disappeared. A search warrant has already been issued. Hmm. It goes without saying that I cannot declare a verdict under these circumstances. I will extend the trial until tomorrow, the final day allowed. I request that the police department utilize all its forces to find that witness. Am I understood? One more thing. Just who is that boat shop caretaker? I think his identity has become very important to this trial. I want him and I want to know who he is. Very well. Court is adjourned. My god, we saved ourselves from the skin of our teeth. That is all thanks to Larry. <laughs> Yay, Nick, you did it. Yeah, well, at least we got out from under that guilty verdict. What about Larry? That was something else. Even my comment didn't know what to do with his testimony. Larry really helped us out. Sure, once I sifted through his unique testimony. Still, he did save us. I just wish our cases weren't so down to the wire all this time. I know what you mean. Sometimes I feel like it's us on trial instead of our clients. Hey, Edgeworth. Um, Mr. Edgeworth? Did you say something? Don't look so pained. I mean, it looks like you're probably going to get off the hook. We could try to smile just a little. Relax. I'm sorry. I fear it's not over for me yet. What do you mean? Right. There's something that's been troubling me for a long time now. No, there's a little time left. I want to tell you. Get out of my chest, but... Mm, can't make up my mind. What is this about, Edgeworth? It's a nightmare I've had. A memory of a crime that I committed. A crime you committed? A memory of a murder. Edgeworth did kill someone? Uh, yeah, we'll save. We'll save in slot two. Okay, good. I'm sorry about yawning into the mic there. Oh, everyone's so sad. What was Mr. Edgeworth talking about? someone's life. Never. Never. Yo, how's everyone doing? What do you think of my performance today? I am swooning in the aisles, huh, Maya? Swooning? Me? Oh, oh yes. I do remember feeling faint. 
Right on, tell me the truth. It was like love at first sight. Right, Nick? Huh? Me? Well, well maybe my heart's good to beat her too. I think you can do better than that. Come on, I saved Edgeworth in there, dude. Edgy! You guys should be bowing before me, yeah. Bow before your hero. Larry, you really helped the, out in the trial today. You did. If you weren't there, Larry, I'm sure Miss Edgeworth would have been found guilty. <laughs> but seriously, Nick. That boat shop caretaker guy is pretty suspicious. But Edgy ain't off the hook yet. I'm gonna spoil the mood, Larry. Hey, I'm just a guy sitting in the audience, you know? Where I was sitting, I just seemed pretty edgy. I mean, can you really know if he's telling the truth about that night? Nick? I don't know. But what I do know is I'm going to believe in you two until the end. Us two? Edgeworth and who else? You and me. Nah, he means me, right, Nick? Yeah, you, Larry. But why you, you, Larry? Actually, yeah, why me, Nick? Enough with the silent treatment. Nick, why do you trust Mr. Edgeworth so much? I mean, he's changed recently, true, but when we first met him, he was kind of a jerk, don't you think? You didn't know him back then. Back when he wanted to become a defense attorney. Wait. Is that when you two were classmates? Yes. In grade school, they saved me, Miles. And Larry, they saved me, and I'll never forget it. That's why we came a defense attorney, you know? What? Hey, hey, Larry, what's he talking about? I actually don't know what he's talking about. I kind of forgot. <laughs> okay, Nick, out with it. I'm going to hear this story today, and that's final. Okay, okay. It's kind of a long story, so hang in there. It was the very end of third grade. I was on trial. A class trial. I heard of mock trials, but I never heard of a class trial. You remember, Larry? Spring in the third grade? King in our class got his lunch money stolen. Lunch money? The school was really small. Every month, kids would bring in an envelope with money for lunch from home. You see, anyway, this kid's envelope disappeared with $38 still inside. Oh yeah, now that you mentioned I do remember that. I can see why you forget, though. You were out of school that day. Anyway, the envelope had been stolen during PE class. I was coming down the cold to a skip PE that day. I was the only one not in class. So they thought you did it. Yeah, the kids in the class said I should be put on trial. Trial? So the next day we had a classroom trial with me as the defendant. I didn't do it. I couldn't read any of that because I was keep going by so fast. Now, Phoenix, you n know you shouldn't steal people's money. It's not right. In the end, even the teacher thought I had done. Go over and apologize, Phoenix. I didn't know what was happening. I was so sad I couldn't stop crying. Everyone was staring at me like I'd done it. I tried to apologize. I went to the boy whose money went. Then, so on, and that's when it happened. He shouldn't have to apologize. The only thing that belongs in the trial is evidence. Anything else has no place. You should all be ashamed, amateurs. Miles? It wasn't you who stole my money, was it? No. Then you shouldn't have to apologize. Everyone's been shouting you did it, but no one has any proof. That is why, Your Honor, this boy is innocent. Miles, it was your money that was stolen. Yeah, yeah, he did it. He's the one. We don't need proof. Make him say he's sorry. Why don't you all just shut up? This is always how it is. Everybody gang up on one person. Just like how he feels. He said he didn't do it, so he didn't do it. Very well. I will replace the money myself. This class trial is over. That's how it happened. After that, the three of us were best of friends. Wow, so that's the reason why you were hated in school so much, Phoenix? I was hated in school so much because nobody liked me. End of story. Yeah, I had no idea either. I mean, I forgot. That's when I learned what it meant to be alone. Totally alone without a friend in the world. You did a good thing, Larry. Um, yeah, well, I was just lucky that I took the day off from school. If I'd been there, they would have thought I'd done it. So I, I took kind of personally, you see? When something smells, it's usually the butts. Anyway, Edgeworth and I talked to that class trial. That's when I heard his father was a defense attorney. I remembered his eyes, which shine when he talked about his father. 
I'm going to become a defense attorney just like my father. A famous defense attorney. Then a few months later, he suddenly transferred to another school. The 06 incident. Right, I'm not sure, but a transfer probably had to do with his father's death. That's so sad. It was several years later that I heard Edgeworth's name again. There was an article about him in the newspaper. The headline was something like, Dark Suspicions of a Demon Attorney. Fabricating evidence, manipulating testimonies, covering up facts. The article said he'd do anything to get a guilty verdict, anything. But why? What happened? I mean, that's not the energy I used to know at all. That's what I thought, too. I tried to get in touch with him. I don't know how many times. He never replied. I guess he didn't want to see his old friends. I couldn't just drop it, though. I wanted to meet him, to learn why he had become who he had became. That's when I decided. Wait, you don't mean... That's why? That's why you became a defense attorney? To meet Edgeworth? Yeah, pretty crappy reason there. Not gonna lie. Edgeworth believed in me, and I believed in him. He's in pain, and no one else is on his side. I'm the only one who knows the real Edgeworth. I'm the only one who can help him. Whoa, Nick! So, is that why you helped me out for free? Uh, yes. I helped you because I believed in you. Except I don't remember saying I do it for free. Oh, Nick, Nick! Nick, we have to save Mr. Edgeworth if it's the last thing we do, okay? Right, and very well maybe. First, there's that rental boat shop caretaker. We need to find out who or what he is. That's all for who. I guess I can clean out some of the sevens I no longer need. Let's go. What we get rid of? I don't really know. We should have to grow asparagus. He's out again. Grossberg is not there. Detention center! You look as grim as always. <laughs> I'm Mr. Just, I heard the story about the class trial. Class trial? What do you mean? You don't remember? No, I don't. Your lunch money was stolen. Lunch money? Oh, alright. Yes, I seem to remember something like that. Nick, I think you're the only one who really remembers. Well, it probably only really mattered to me anyway. Mr. Edward, didn't you know? The trial was the reason Nick became a defense attorney. Ridiculous. Gee, thanks. That said, it does sound like the kind of thing you do. You haven't changed one bit, have you, right? So simple, to a fault even. Maybe, yeah, but you haven't changed too much, Edgeworth. Perhaps. Uh, why prosecute? Hey, Edgeworth, why did you become a prosecutor anyway? You used to look up to your dad. You said you wanted to become a defense attorney, right? I couldn't let myself deny reality like you. What do you mean? My father was taken from me and you want me to defend criminals? I'm sorry, right? But I'm not that good of a person. One suspect was apprehended in your father's murder, right? Yes, the man trapped in the other with my father. His name was Yanni Yogi. He ought to be the shooter any way you look at it. Yet, he was found innocent. That defense attorney got him off the hook. That would be Robert Hammond. On that day 15 years ago, the three of us were trapped in that elevator for five hours. When we were rescued, all, we all suffered oxygen depression, deprivation. I had lost all memory of that murder. Lost your memory? Even now, I can't recall what happened in that elevator. It was the crooks of Yogi's attorney argument in the court. Claim Yanni Yogi had been not of sound mind due to oxygen deprivation. Yogi was released due to lack of evidence, innocence. That's when I changed my mind. I started feeling. I started to hate defense attorneys. What's your relationship with Von Karma? He's my teacher and a man who deserves respect. I learned everything I know of the courtroom techniques from him. He's like my sister was to you, Nick. He's a perfectionist in all things. In courts, in his personal life, he obsessed with doing everything perfectly. Perfectly, huh? In all the cases he has taken on, none were left unsolved. And not one suspect was declared innocent, ever. But, but that's... I know. It's 
possible some of the suspects were indeed innocent. However, it is impossible for us to accurately determine that in every case. All violent commerce does is a job to find the suspect guilty perfect. And in the case, it's nigh well impossible to find a weakness in him. Should a weakness appear, he would do everything in his power to make it go away. Um, Edgeworth, if what you're saying is true, you're headed for a guilty sentence tomorrow. That's right, no time to praise the enemy, Mr. Edgeworth. Strange situation in which I find myself, I'll admit. You're kidding. Okay, we have the DO6 case. Oh, it was that case that changed my life. And tomorrow, December 28th, and Statue of Limitations runs out. Tomorrow? Could that be a coincidence? But, even if the case is finally closed on paper, it'll never be erased from my memory. Never. Poor Mr. Edgeworth. We should probably move to the... I don't know. Let's look around. Hey, pal! Long time no see! Oh, Detective Gumshoe! Close one today, eh? I got so worked up I snapped my tie in half. Uh, sorry about that. No problem, pal. Thanks to you, we now know who really did it. You mean the boat shop caretaker? Look, I'll make you a promise. I'll have that scoundrel custody by trial to time tomorrow. Come up, May. It's my duty to you as a police officer. Now I'm off to catch the criminal. And on that note of Gumshoe going off to catch an old senile man, we are going to end this episode off here. I hope you all enjoyed this episode, and I hope to see you all next time on the next episode of Ace Attorney. See you all next time.